welcome back to my channel my name's jessica and from jessica's craft time and today we are going to do our whip and chat so whip just means work in progress which i've been working on this dream catcher canvas with you this one i purchased from shoalhaven diamond dots um, dot com dot au and they are a new south wales business um she's south of Sydney, um, love her customer service and I always get my stuff so, so quickly, but I am using a new tray today. So this one I've been testing out and I've recently unboxed it. Um, it's from my next door maker.com. Um, I love it. There's one or two spots in it. There's a little ridge that the, um, drills struggle to slide along. I think I can get a, a lid for it, which I'd really like because I do have a little bit of trouble getting them back in. I find I have to move them down with my fingers, but I love it. Um, bigger than your standard of rubber. So that's your standard green boat in it. So it's a bit bigger. And then that's your funnel one. So it's not too much bigger than your funnel, but yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying it. Um, and the diamonds sit nice and flat in it. I also got this one here, which is a grinder, which is really good for um, if you've got any drills stuck together. And in that package, I also got a, mm, a light cover. Um, so it's a little... So they just sit really focus. Should come back into focus soon. Um, come on. There you go. Um, it's a little cover that you stick onto your light pad and it sticks over the on off switch so you don't bump it. So yeah, I, I'm not using a light pad with this one, so I don't have my light pad on me, but so I really enjoy that. So I'll link that below. I'll link those two businesses below. The pen I'm using today is just one that I've played with and made myself. Um, nothing special. It's just a spare pen. Um, if you've watched any of my whip and chats before, or any of my videos, I actually video out in my garage. I have my little craft table set up here. I do have a sort of sewing slash study room inside the house, which is where all my sewing machines set up. But my um, my card making and my miniature making is all done out in my garage. I've got a little table set up with some shelves behind me that I keep everything on. And my main diamond painting area is normally my dining room table, which sits right next to our lounge suite. So my husband's a gamer, so he tends to sit there at night once my son goes to bed, or our son goes to bed, and he um, plays games on his Xbox. And I diamond paint, so I do most of it. I do have a little table as well that I can move around. And sit on the couch if I want to. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm a shocker for dropping my drills. <laughs> um, really bad. So I tend to find on my little table I have to hold because I have the table tilted. So I have to hold my tray. I tend to drop more um, because I don't have as much surface table area under me to catch any that I drop. Um, but yeah, little projects I'll work on my little table on the couch sometimes. So it just depends what I'm feeling like. So what were we up to last weekend? So I generally film these on about a Wednesday and they go up on the following Monday. So we're talking about the week before. Um, only because I like to be a little bit ahead because life tends to get in the way for me. So if for some reason something comes up, it means that I've always got something ready for you guys to watch so last weekend speaking about spilt drills last weekend um, my son went down to my in-laws for the weekend he loves spending time with them so he was down there for the weekend so hubby and I had a quiet weekend at home we were going to do some gardening except for the fact that it rained all weekend so what did I do all weekend? I did my diamond paintings. 
I finished off, uh, I think it's a 30 by 40. I finished off and that will be coming up soon. I'll show you what I have um, completed. So I finished that off and then I started working on some of my special projects, which is for Smashing the Specials, which is through Myst Mystria Diamonds. Um, and then who's the other one? I can't remember who she's doing a collab with. It's gone out of my mind. Um, so I've been smashing my specials. Um, so I've been doing my storage tubs from Shoalhaven Diamond Dots again. So they're going to look amazing once I, I don't know if I've unboxed them yet. Anyway, they're coming up if I haven't unboxed them already. My unboxings tend to be a little bit further ahead in my recording than anything else. Just because I'm not a very patient person. I can't let a package sit. Um, so yeah, so I did my diamond painting all weekend. I had a very, very relaxed, easy weekend. And then my son got home. He didn't get dropped off till Monday morning. My father-in-law works not far from here they're about 45 minutes away where they live but he works about 15 minutes from home so they were going to bring him back on sunday night but they're like well he's got to go to work on monday so can you just drop him off monday morning so they did anyway then he got my son got to help me vacuum up all my spilt drills under the table and it was a sea of sparkle under my table after spending all weekend <laughs> dotting away um it was very very sparkly under there so i'm a shocker for dropping but i also don't like picking them up too quickly because i'm like oh if i run out of colors i just need to go and search under my table and i'll find them all so yeah it was a productive weekend for me for crafts not so productive for much else around the house we really didn't do much else um but it was nice to have a down weekend and the weather was so so crappy it was raining and windy it was really windy we have our little house is down in just a little bit of a dip so when it gets windy at home you know it's windy you know it's windy we can normally sit in the backyard and look up and our neighbors are all sort of a bit higher than us and we can see their trees going so we always know when it's windy because we can look up, but when it starts sort of gusting round our heads, like, mm, it's pretty windy out there today. Oh, I think I've gone a bit higher than you. So, yeah, that that was it. Didn't do much over the weekend at all. Um, so far this week, we, as I think I was saying in my last Whitman chat, we've been teaching Mark to ride his bike without his training wheels on so that has been interesting he's got it so much quicker than what i ever thought he would um so we've been investigating more and more bike tracks we found one that was about 20 minutes away it's not really a bike track it's more of a walking track but you know to take the little little tacker out on his bike it was perfect and it ended in a playground so he was wrapped and then we turned around and walked home so that was really nice along by the water. So we did that. Other than that, it's been pretty quiet. And I think this week's going to be fairly quiet too. Um, just, you know, your normal Monday family life stuff. But I don't think we've got any big plans. I think um, this weekend, I think my hubby's going to help his father go and pick up a sauna. So... I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if we're going to help them do it or not. I guess I'll find out. Um, yeah, so that's sort of all the life updates. But today, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of my experiences as a child. So I grew up in Melbourne, Victoria, in Australia. And... Um, I, my grandmother and grandfather lived about two, two and a half hours, depending on traffic and roadworks and speed limits, etc. away. And they lived in what's called the high country 
in they lived in Mansfield and Main Dample. They're both towns very close to each other. So growing up, I was very, very fortunate in the fact, sorry, I'm just trying to find some more of these. There's some. I was very fortunate in the fact that I got to spend some time up in the country. My grandmother was a hobby farmer. She always had between about 25 and 20, 25 acres. So not big, but enough to run some sheep. So I grew up with um sheep and pigs i don't remember the pigs much they were more when i was really little and cows and goats and donkeys and oops my hand stuck all sorts of array of animals sorry if that's making you feel sick um and my grandmother bred black and colored sheep so I used to love lambing time and we'd go up there and there'd be all the little lambs around. Which are all very, very cute. And so, yeah, I, I got to grow up being around lambs being born and my grandmother used to show, show her sheep. So I used to go along and help show the sheep and you'd walk the sheep around and the judges would judge them and you know I was around a lot of fleeces and I actually taught myself to spin on a spinning wheel wool when I was about 12. I taught myself to spin. I'm not very good at it but I can still do it. I hadn't hadn't um, touched it for a very long time and I was helping my grandmother with a heritage show one day. And she had to go to the bathroom. So I stepped up and took over her spot. Not quite dressed to the the costume my grandmother was in, but um, I was still able to spin that wool. And, you know, it didn't take me long to get back in the swing of it. So it's sort of a bit like riding a bike once you learn. Um, it's quite easy to sort of pick it up again. And I had a Shetland pony. So when I was born, I'm one of five grandkids when I was born my grandmother got a pony and her name was I named her Snugglepot and she was a pony to all us five grandkids and she was a beautiful beautiful horse you could almost do anything to her one of my brother's favorite things when he was little he was only like four or five he wasn't very old at all he used to just walk up behind her with a brush and start brushing her tail and if anyone knows anything about horses, you should not just walk up straight behind a horse and start brushing their tail. Because um, those back legs can be very dangerous. So she was a beautiful, beautiful horse. Um, and I had her until I was about 16. And she got sick and had to be put down. But she was the, the grandkids' ponies and she was beautiful. Um, but she, she wouldn't misbehave sometimes and things did happen as you do with any animals my sister was riding her and at this time the property that my nana lived at was along lake eildon so at the back of her property was a lake and something happened and she bolted with my sister on the back of her off into the sunset and my grandmother was standing there just going well, there's not much I can do as they both bolt off into the sunset. My sister bouncing around on the top of her. Um, there was another time my grandmother had just purchased, oh, almost gone off, just purchased me. It's very hard to show you close up and keep, um, keep myself in shot because I'm kind of moving all over it. Uh, my grandmother had just purchased me a brand new riding helmet. There was no diamond on that brand new riding helmet which I'd never had so this tray just sorry if that makes you and they just sit beautifully come on oh I think I've got a delivery come on focus there you go um yeah so I'd just been given this brand new riding helmet it was a very dark blue in like a velvety and one of the paddocks going from the closest paddock to the house up to the top paddocks, there was a whole heap of large rocks. So, you know, decent, decent sized rocks. 
through the gateway and that's because if you know anything about um, properties then quite often through your gateways tends to get very muddy especially in the winter because you have animals and all sorts of animals and and people walking through the same spot so your gateways tend to get you know the muddiest and my grandfather is a truck driver so he used to have to drive his trucks through this particular gate if he wanted to just sort of park his truck up and he wasn't using it for a bit. So I was on the back of Snuggles or Snuggle Pot through the gate and for some reason something happened. I think she tripped on the rocks because, you know, they weren't just gravel. They were decent sized rocks. I think she tripped and I came off and my mum and my nana were there with me. And I started bawling and bawling and bawling and I'm crying and crying and crying. And they're thinking, what, you know, what's wrong? What's she hurt? You know, she was only a small pony, but still falling off a pony onto rocks is quite hard. And I finally managed to calm myself down. And, Nana, I dirtied my new riding helmet. And they just both cracked up laughing. The whole reason I was crying wasn't because I hurt myself on the rocks, was because I'd got a little bit of dirt on my new riding helmet. And it was an easy fix. They literally, they just brushed it off. It was just a little bit of dirt. But I was so upset at my riding helmet. But I also know now as an adult and as um, populations get bigger and, and cities expand, I was very, very lucky as a child to be able to experience living and spending time with my grandmother on her property. Um, I, she's an amazing woman. She had all sorts of animals. People would call her up and, and say, oh, I've got this animal and, and it needs a home and she'd take it in. You know, she got to a point she had to start saying no because she couldn't take any more animals. But we, ha she had alpacas, she had emus at one point. Um, there was one stage that we had joeys, baby kangaroos, jumping around the living room with us because she was feeding and fostering baby kangaroos. Um, so to be able to experience it, you know, we'd get up there. There was no TV, you know. Well, there was a TV. We didn't watch it much unless it was really bad outside. You know, we'd be out, we'd be riding a horse, we'd be on our bikes. Nana used to have bikes for us all and we'd go off riding. There was one time my sister and I went for a walk and it had not long been raining. And this property that she lived on, out on, you know, it was quite a walk to the, the, the road. And then out on the road, it was all dirt roads, but the road that she lived on, oh, I missed all those ones there damn it come back um there was like next to it was a dirt road but next to the dirt road was a another track that they'd used to drive the cattle and the sheep along towards the pens at the end of the road um because all the farmers would use these pens and it had been raining and there was these big puddles so as kids, what do you do? You jump in the puddles until my sister got stuck, which was fine. I pulled over, you know, I stopped, helped her out. But as I've gone to pull her out, she pulls me in. So next thing, we go walking back down the driveway, two of us, and we were probably, we are fairly young, we are probably 10, 10 or so count 10, 10, 11, something, somewhere around that age. We come walking back down the driveway. Now, it's been raining, it's winter, it's cold, and we're covered. We are covered in this cold. Where did that one go? We're covered, we're cold, we're wet, and we're muddy. My grandmother's like, no, 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 you are not coming into the house like that. You're going to get mud everywhere. So she made us like hose off outside <laughs> in the cold water 
to get you know the most of the mud off before we were allowed to trek inside and warm up but that's what we did yeah when um another story i'm one of three and my grandmother said to my mother you are not allowed to have a baby in winter because it's lambing season well what did my mother do my mother went and had my brother on the 4th of july right smack bang in the middle of winter right smack bang in the middle of snow of um lambing season so nana you she didn't have a big the most i sort of remember is her only having about a hundred head hundred hundred sheep but because she bred black and colored sheep and she bred them for the fleece they are important to her so when my brother was born my sister and i got to go and stay with my nana for a little bit just so you know mama my brother could work things out as you do when you have a newborn and my grandmother what would happen during lambing season is that my grandmother would get up early in the morning 6 a.m and walk around the paddocks and make sure that none of the ewes from the night before had had trouble lambing that there was none that were in trouble that you know you'd have to get down and pull a sheet a lamb out or there was there was no issue she'd check on her animals but where my grandmother was at 6 a.m in the morning it can be minus four minus five degrees and it's cold if you're lucky if it's a good morning it's it's zero or one degrees outside so there she had my sister and i little kids six o'clock in the morning having to go and check on all these ewes to make sure that everything was okay so this is where my beautiful pony snuggle pots came in what she'd do is she'd rug us up we'd have beanies we'd have scarves we'd have mittens we'd have our big thick socks on with our gum boots and our big jackets and she'd rug us up and she'd put us on top of the pony and away we went she'd walk the pony around the paddock so we didn't have to walk because you know what child wants to be walking around in the cold at 6 a.m in the morning and she'd rug us up and take us out and we'd check on all the the sheep and then we come back and warm up by the fire and that's what i loved about the country too i mean you can in the city as well but nana always had a fire you know sitting there by the fire and she had this um wooden step that used to sit in front of the fire and it had it's a carved wooden bench and it has snakes carved into it and i love that bench and you'd sit by that bench cuddled up in front of the fire and get nice and warm but yes i mean i you you don't think of it as a child but as a child i'm so lucky that i managed to experience all these things i managed to be able to see lambs being born and and run around in the mud and and jump on your bike and go for a ride and and look for koalas and not have to worry about you know my mum didn't worry if we got on a bike there was nothing around one of the properties my grandmother lived at it was two two kilometers or might have even been two miles to the next neighbor so we could just get out on the road there was very few cars that came down the roads and if they did they were always they weren't speeding down the road because there was always something around be it an animal or a child or something um but being up there oh, i used to the cold in winter because it just used to get so cold and it would get cold that would snow so you have the closest mountain is mount buller to where my grandmother was and my uncle worked up on mount buller um but it, it's expensive to go it's expensive to go skiing so i wasn't much of a skier we we didn't really go as family but my uncle would sometimes bring us a ute load of snow down so if he's been up there and they've had a good snowfall and the back of his ute would get filled and he'd bring a ute load of snow down that we could play in but one year was a particularly good year for snow 
and we had my cousins at this stage my I think there was only, I think there was only the eldest one and he was about one and we didn't have a toboggan we had the and I don't know if you remember them the old yellow plastic bathtubs you used to bath your kids in we had one of them so being up there and it's their local area they know all the back streets and things like that so my nana knew of an area that was had a bit of a hill by the road by the side of the road that we could play in the snow so away we go rugged up in the cars off we go we get up there and we're sort of tobogganing in this yellow baby bath down the hill and we're having a ball until i think it was my auntie put my cousin in this yellow bathtub and he's only one he was only little he might have even been younger no he might have been yeah around one or just a just i don't think he was littler than that anyway and they put him in the bathtub and i'm standing at the bottom waiting to catch him and i caught the bathtub and he kept going face first into the snow kept sliding down the hill and i'm standing there with a bathtub without my cousin mm, yeah they didn't let me catch him after that they let someone else catch him at the bottom of the hill because <laughs> i didn't do a very good job at catching him but yeah so yeah really lucky to be able to have all these times and my grandmother used to fossick for crystals so there was a spot near one of the houses she lived in and we used to she was famous for her sausage rolls she used to make the best sausage rolls so we'd put all the so she'd heat up some sausage rolls and we'd wrap them up to keep them warm and away we'd go up these hills near she lived and we'd go fossicking for crystals and we'd spend the afternoon sitting on the side of a hill, digging holes in it to find crystals. And, you know, there's not many kids that get to experience those kind of things now. Um, snakes were another thing. You, you had to be wary of snakes. And there's, there's a very well-known photo of me from being a baby in my family that when you were growing up, because there was always snakes around in summer, that you weren't allowed outside unless you had gum boots on. You always had to have some sort of clothes cover shoes and it used to just be easier to stay gum boots. So it wasn't unusual in winter, that, in summer, that we'd be walking around in our gum boots. But when I was little, I'm outside and there's a photo of me um, crouching down, looking in the garden bed and I've got my little blue gum boots on and that's it. That's it. Just my blue gum boots. So, yeah, tough if I was sitting down and a snake came or I squatted on a snake. But, yeah, I'd just have my blue gumboots on. And then being up in, in the country where your neighbours are, you know, a fair distance away, it wasn't unusual. I remember Nana making me one day. It was raining. And it might be where my son gets a love for water, but it was raining and it had been quite warm. It wasn't cold. It had been quite warm and it was raining and for some reason just above the steps on the back veranda the guttering was leaking and it's like well we can't waste water because up there you lived on tank water so if the water got low you had no water you had to buy it in and it was quite expensive to buy in water so you know we always had to be very careful of how much water we were using and it's like well the gutter's leaking so we're not getting any watering our tanks so here you go here's a bar of soap and she made us go and stand on the back veranda under this leaking gutter and wash ourselves and have a shower she's like i'm not wasting the water can't afford to waste the water so yeah very much grew up um you know especially in summer when it'd been really dry you'd go to the toilet and the hole if it's yellow let it mellow if it's brown flush it down you know you couldn't afford to flush the toilet too often because it uses quite a lot of water to flush the toilet. But having open fires and showing sheep and, you know, just being around different animals and joeys and, yeah, donkey, her donkey's gorgeous. My husband's uncle lives in Russia. He's because my husband's from Russia. And, oh, I just spilt them. 
and he absolutely loved nana ha has had to give away the donkey now but he absolutely loved my grandmother's donkey emily she she's gorgeous she just you could do anything to her you could just walk up to her she was so quiet emily the donkey so yeah to be able to have the experiences like that is quite quite rare now and I'm kind of sad my son won't get to experience it because my grandmother has since sold the property and moved on. Um, I'll just bring this out so you can see it a bit better. So, yeah, that's just some of my stories. So we've done quite a bit today. I reckon the next whip and chat, we might actually finish it. We've got a few more colours down in here and a couple of the big ones here and we're done. So our dream catcher is coming along beautifully. So I might leave it there today because we finished that colour. I'm still loving my little um, pencil container from Shoalhaven. You can get these almost anywhere as well. Why won't that sit in there today? I've got my fat end of my pen. Um, yeah, my sparkly pen container. So thank you all very much for watching today. Um, I hope you have a lovely day for the rest of the day and a, a beautiful week. This will go up on a Monday and I will see you all soon. If you've enjoyed my, visit, uh, my videos, please think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. And I hope you all have a lovely day. See you later.